Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Small Business School is made possible by support from IBM. We're not just for big business anymore. At our website, discover how technology can move your business forward. When it's your business, everything matters. IBM. And the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. Hi, I'm Hattie Bryant. Most of us who start a business do it to fulfill a dream, but in the back of our mind is the thought that we might just become a multimillionaire along the way. This episode is to help all of us learn how to achieve big financial goals. We're going to learn from a few small business owners who are using a little-known Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, financial instrument to raise capital and implement a succession plan without doing an IPO. It's called the Small Corporate Offering Registration, SCORE for short, Reg D Rule 504 for the technical among us. We went to the State Capitol Building in Austin, Texas to learn more because Texas is one of the friendliest states to the SEC's Small Corporate Offering Registration. In most states, there is a $1 million cap per year. In Texas, it's unlimited. When he was governor, President Bush was big on small business in Texas, and so is the state legislature. It has made it relatively easy to raise capital in the state. Small business is the basis, is the backbone of the free enterprise system. Most of the jobs in Texas, most of the new jobs are created by small business. Secondly, part of the Texas dream is for someone to own their business. That attitude has helped businesses like this one. The people of Blue Whale Movers really move on the job. And that's one of the reasons this Austin, Texas company has been so successful. When the owners wanted to grow the business, they needed additional money. And they raised it through a small corporate offering registration. I was practicing law here in Austin, Texas uh, in 1987. And we moved our home, uh, my wife and I. And we called a local moving company. We had two young men come out. And I was really expecting two old guys to take all day to break all my furniture. And uh, two young, six foot three, good looking guys showed up and they moved us in about two and a half hours. I mean, my entire household. It was extraordinary because they would take a load down the trailer and literally run back for another load. And I was totally dazzled and stunned by their work ethic. They didn't stop for breaks, they didn't stop for, stop for lunch. They just worked and worked and worked and worked and got it all done. And at the end of the day, their attitude, if anything, was more up and positive than it was when they started they at the saying, beginning of the day. They were saying, yes, we finished, we did it. <laughs> they were extraordinary, and it was a work ethic that I had not seen demonstrated in a very long time. Mm. So we knew we wanted to build a company that might one day have greater than just an Austin presence, and we knew the power of a trademark. So Blake and I spent three days poring over names, looking for a trademark that was fanciful, that was unique, and that was non-descriptive, which are the requirements for a national trademark. And it was as if a light bulb went off over our heads. We could see the blue whale as people now see them on our trailers going down the highways, and we knew that that was the definitive mark for a moving company. You said somebody, some light bulb went on, we got to have some money. That's correct. And is that when David Porter came into your life? Yes. I'm a stockbroker and one of my clients uh, was n unwilling to make an investment in a stock that I had suggested to him because he told me how much more money he could make by putting it into his own business. So and, the light bulb goes the, off for you. That's correct. The light bulb went off for me. If and I, I said, can't get this guy to invest in the 3M Corporation because well, he's making more money in his own business, something's here. 
and he really is extraordinary. He's gotten more scores through uh, the State Securities Board of Texas than any other person uh, in the world. So he is the expert on at least Texas scores and perhaps more scores than anybody else. I don't know. So we're really fortunate to have him as a member of the team. Uh, but David approached, to us and, uh, approached us and explained scores to us. We really were not good candidates, at least we thought at the time, for venture money. Uh, we were not very good candidates for bank financing. And uh, Dave explained to us the uh, power of the score, and we had seen what Gary Hoover had done with Travel Fest. So we had some understanding of what was possible. Mm -hmm. All right. So what did you all have to do to make it happen. You just turned it over to David and the team and said, David, go for it? I would say it was very much a team effort. Uh, as you know from the score, it's a 50 question or so uh, questionnaire that is answered and then basically reprinted in the form of a, of a prospectus. There's audited financials, which is a, an additional uh, uh, expenditure. Why a score? Well, we looked at the venture capital route a little bit and they were willing to do it, but they wanted total control of the company. They uh, and we weren't willing to give up our vision. We weren't willing to give up uh, control of us accomplishing the vision that I told you earlier. Mm -hmm. So the score made sense. We were able to maintain control of the company and still uh, have the opportunity to raise the money that we needed to grow. So the venture capitalists wanted controlling interest. With the score, what are you giving up? Well, if we sell out the entire score offering, we will give up 11% of the company. Okay, so that feels good to you. Uh, yes, and, uh, and in retrospect, I probably would have made it more. So. So let's talk about limits that we can raise. So in Texas, it's, it's unlimited. There is no limit. There is no upper limit. But other limit. states do have but limits. But other states do have a $1 million limit if the, if the offering is done as an interstate offering, that is more than one state involved, then you're limited to $1 million per year. A person who invests in the stock market can expect over very, very long periods of time to earn approximately a 10 to 12% rate of return. The uh, data that would be corresponding for venture capital firms is that they expect approximately a 27 to 30 percent return on investment of a similar nature. If someone can get something in between on the average for a small corporate offering, that would make a lot of sense economically. So between 12 and 27 percent there's, return. There's quite a bit of room in between for somebody to make money on a, an offering that is a, uh, uh, a part venture and part uh, stock okay. vehicle. They have to Stockbroker David Porter has helped Blue Whale and two other companies go public using the small corporate offering registration. One of the businesses is the legendary recording company Sun Records. I hear the train a coming, it's rolling around the bend. Sun raised $125,000 through the small corporate offering registration to help it expand its sales of artists like Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, and yes, Elvis Presley. Sun tells its story to prospective investors in such a compelling way, what country music lover could resist making an investment? Come on, baby, drive crazy. Goodness gracious, it's great balls of fire. The company needs a very well-defined, thought-out business plan mm -hmm. that will enable people to look at the company and be willing to put money aside for four years, five years, two years, whatever it turns out to be, while they're waiting for that company to effectively employ their money. Okay. Uh, they uh, And that's generally the way it works. Generally, uh, people are patient and their reward comes at the end of some period of time. Can I do this myself? Is this do it yourself? Can I go to the internet and get all the stuff and just roll it out? That's a pretty common myth. Uh, that I've seen a lot of places that would lead you to suspect that that might happen, but it's been our experience, at least in this state and in most of the other states of which I'm aware, that uh, the people who've been successful in selling their securities to the public and making it all work uh, have been people with extensive background in the, the securities business or they, themselves, or they've gone out and they've hired a professional, uh, such as myself or some other broker dealer, mm -hmm. to assist them in that offering. Another essential element is going to be the hiring of a securities attorney because a good securities attorney makes a very large difference in one of these offerings. Uh, 
And then, of course, they will also need a certified public accountant to perform the audit. Okay, one of our goals here is to raise money from the public without paying the arm and a leg to Wall Street. Because, and, and let's go over those numbers again. It might cost me as much as what to go public? A common number that's that's thrown around is five to six hundred thousand dollars. And to do a score, in it might be upfront costs, and even that doesn't include all of it. Okay, so five hundred thousand up to go public. Correct. Deborah Bortner, the director of securities in the state of Washington, tells us how the score came to be. Actually, I've been a big advocate of small business for the almost twenty years I've been in this business. In fact, the state of Washington actually uh, created a form, which we called fill in the blanks offering circular, and now which is known as SCORE. Uh, it, it really started in the state of Washington and other states um, were encouraged uh, by the North American Securities Administrators Association to adopt that form. We also worked on the form and in fact we're working on it now to make it easier for people to fill out. Later the, the SEC also adopted that form so people can actually use this fill in the blanks offering circular known as SCORE or U7 to raise up to five million dollars. To access the U7, come to smallbusinessschool.org and click on Steps, then click on Step 7. You'll need a knowledgeable business person, a general business attorney, and a CPA to get through the process. It absolutely takes some time. It's not just fill it in, use it, and you're going to get your money. Um, in fact, a, a number of people have thought it was a grant project. It's not. The entrepreneur has to fill out the form. But they should know how because the questions are, are very intuitive. You know, what's your business? Um, who are your competitors? Who's involved in the business? What are you going to use the money for? Uh, that's a process that you go through to get a securities registration. Once that's done, the entrepreneur decides where am I going to sell this? If they're going to sell it in one state, they register it in one state. If they're going to sell it in multiple states, normally that happens in regions. And we have a program called Regional Review. For instance, in the West, we have 10 participating states in Regional Review. And that is, the entrepreneur will get one comment letter. They file with all the states, because that's a, a legal uh, requirement. But one state is assigned to review that offering. And they get one comment letter, deal with run, one regulator, and eventually, hopefully, be able to sell in the number of states that they filed in. It's a very good process. What is it going to cost me to do the score successfully? I can't answer that directly because it depends on your company. Uh, if your company already does a lot of advertising, already is doing promotion with respect to your product, like is, already, visibility. is already well known in the public, you're going to spend a lot less because you've already made that investment in your uh, corporate image mm -hmm. and in people's familiarity with your product or service. Mm -hmm. If you have to go generate that, then you're going to have to do a substantial amount of advertising and promotion on your own. Depending on the amount that you're trying to raise, that could easily run thirty to forty thousand dollars. Okay, so but so you're saying most of the money comes in promoting the sale of the stock, not in paying big fees to hot shots like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. At, at least in my case, uh, except for a very small due diligence fee that's paid up front, everything that I make, I make out of the sales of the pro proceeds of the offering, the sales of the stock. David Porter and David Pincus founded the Texas Capital Access Forum. This group meets regularly and has convinced the Texas legislature to provide insurance on up to $21 million invested by Texas in small business. What I discovered was that there was a vacuum of anything anywhere from $50,000 to $25 million uh, where no one could go to to raise that capital unless it's an independent broker but really that independent broker doesn't have the capacity. That's where the networking comes into play. What I'm trying to do is establish a network mm -hmm. to do that in the future. Which is why you're involved. That's why I'm involved in working with all these brokers. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I, I'm, I like to be involved in working with other brokers to provide liquidity for these people who have made these investments. 
at some future date that would like to get their money out. I represent a company called Whirligig and it's uh, associated companies. Whirligig uh, is an established company. It has done training programs on a build-a-suit basis, that is, for a particular client. It's now going into generic uh, seller training for uh, sellers of alcohol, teen training uh, for uh, use of alcohol, uh, and then further down the line, food handling programs, many of which are, ma are mandated by the legislature in which we're um, having this interview. Uh, raising money is just like any other business. It requires a great deal of skill. Uh, it requires a great deal of experience. Does everybody need one of those cool hats? Oh, yes. To well, raise money with? No. <laughs> no, no it is helps. that a part of the storytelling, though? It helps. It okay. helps. It okay. helps. You need it a helps. stick. You need anything you can get to grab people's attention and make them remember you. That's something that small businesses need to learn. You've got to be remembered. You've got to stand out. All of us are over-invested in big business. It's time to think about the entrepreneurs in our own neighborhood for two reasons. When our local companies grow, then our community gets better, and it's rewarding to watch your money up close. You see the deli owner or the software developer at the Chamber of Commerce meeting or the Little League games. We hope more companies start using a SCORE offering, and we hope investors will put money into homegrown entrepreneurs. At smallbusinessschool.org, there is self-help study for people who want to start a business and for those who want to grow the business they have. From the home page, choose Steps to Start or Steps to Grow. Next, you'll find eight steps or stages of growth. At each step, you'll find links to more resources. Also, from the home page, you can choose Learn Online for access to streaming video and interactive study guides. Jonathan Langley started TVPC in his garage, and he's already selling products from his website. His device turns your TV into a computer. Jonathan wanted to find out from David if TVPC okay. is a good candidate for a small corporate offering registration. Okay, this is, this is our new box, which um, is $349. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a prototype, but basically you plug it into your TV. It, it has it's, a microprocessor? With TVPC, especially if I've got children and I have a two-year-old, I can sit there with my two-year-old and actually do education games, load, let take the games from the shelf at the store, load it on the machine, and cruise the web, but I can also sit there with my son William and do some of these education titles or even a Disney title, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas trying, and sit on the couch and do it, mm -hmm. whereas trying to do that putting him in my home office chair with me crouching beside him, even on a 17-inch monitor, that's no fun. So we have Couchware that does all that. Our target market is families who are buying their first PC and want to make it a shared experience, not just in the home office. Mm -hmm. And it's also for families or households who want a second PC mm -hmm. and are tired of having the kids play with dad's home office machine. That market is huge. I mean, we sell these on the web and we get inquiries from all over the world. I mean, we've had inquiries, like I said earlier, from all over Europe. I finance this so far all myself, in myself, and we've grown basically out of a typical startup situation, mm -hmm. out of a garage. Uh, David, based on everything you've seen today, do you think we're a good candidate for a DPO? I think you're an excellent candidate for an internet direct public offering. Wow. And do you think the internet is a great place to publicize that? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. Especially for an in internet business. Right. How much do you have to give up on a DPO in ownership terms? Less than with the other routes, okay. but I can't answer that question until I've Full seen what, what your, your uh, well, you have to be selling at least 10% of your business, I would okay, guess. Okay, that's fine. That's in, fine. Order, in order to, to make it appear all right, to be All right, but it's not like 50% or something? No. Okay, all right, that, that's, that's what I was getting at. Thomas Stewart Gordon, who publishes the SCORE Report, a newsletter about capital formation, says, when looking for a broker to help you sell your stock, don't engage anyone you haven't checked out. Keep in mind, very few brokers are familiar with SCORE. Some brokers will ask you for leads to help you sell your stock, then they will try to sell other offerings to the leads you've given them. 
Any broker you talk with should ask for a due diligence fee, then will also want to see your financial statements, business plan, tax returns, and many other details before he agrees to sell your stock to his customers. When you find a broker you think will work for you, call your state securities board and tell them you want to run a name through the CRD. It contains the names of all National Association of Securities dealers, registered firms, and individual brokers together with their disciplinary history. This is Thomas Stewart Gordon. Well, of course, the first thing you have to have is a business plan because the Form U7, which is the do-it-yourself prospectus or offering document, uh, works best if you have a business plan. You just take items from the business plan and put it into the 50 questions of the, uh, of the Form U7. Uh, you have to file this form with any state in which you wish to sell your securities. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is that companies that deal with the state, with their state, are better off than companies that try to sell in, say, California because there are a lot of people in California. If, the comp if you're not known, you're panhandling, you're asking strangers for money, and it's not going to work that well. So it's better to, s to register in your own state. Go try where to you're known. So what is this really going to cost me to go out and raise a mil under a million dollars or a million to five million? Well, the average is about $30,000. That includes the attorney. If you have an attorney, review your documents, which I recommend, so you don't paint yourself into a corner and say you're going to do something you can't possibly do. Uh, the accountant, mailing, postage, phone calls. Normally what happens is that the company gets big enough to get noticed by an even bigger company who makes an offer, buys the company, buys all the shareholders' stock, and that's how you, that's how you harvest your investment. It's worth a try. Oh, yeah, you know, if you do your homework and if you've got a good company and a good plan, good management, then you're more likely to win than if you are at the I got a great idea stage. So we can subscribe to your newsletter? Yes, you may. And we find out about that by going to www.score-report.com. Right, no E on score. Someone's invested in my company and now they're saying, I want my money out, I'm going to go invest someplace else. How do they get their money out? They don't. <laughs> they do not get their, their money out by having the company pay them their money. They made an investment in a stock. The reason they made that investment in the stock is that they... In, expected the value of that entire company to go up and they expected that company's earnings to become worth more to other potential uh, purchasers. Generally it's up to that other individual investor to find some other investor to buy a stock. Okay, so me. this is the difference between a score and Wall Street. Yes. Wall Street exists with all these professionals buying and trading that's mm -hmm. the secondary market you're talking about. That's correct. That's the access to these secondary markets for the big stocks, or for regular stocks. For, for large companies. All right. right. But with a score offering, the individual who bought into my business is going to hold on to those shares until they find someone to buy it from them. Well, there, there are several reasons that they want to do that, not the least of which is a tax reason. If you purchase most of these small corporate offerings, uh, the majority will qualify under Section 1202 of the tax code, which means that if you hold them for five years or more, whenever you sell them, you get to exclude 50% of the capital gain from taxation. Oh, my gosh. The uh, other side... So that's side, a good reason to buy a score. That's one good reason to buy a score. Another reason is, is that the, the company may qualify under Sections 1244 or 1245, which say that if you sell that stock and... Uh, make an equal investment in another qualified company, you at least defer that tax. You don't play, pay the tax on it right now. Additionally, you have the ability, uh, if things really go bad, badly for the company, that you may be able to write the entire investment off as a direct write-off against your taxes rather than have to take, take it as a uh, capital loss. All right, so give us some sort of wonderful close your philosophy about why small business deserves our investment. Small business deserves your investment because it has the potential of making you more money with tax advantages that are not available in large companies.
you can develop a score document right on the Small Business School website by answering the interactive questions. It's a good exercise, and at the very least, you'll have an excellent business plan. In the first 10 years of business, we all generally focus on managing our debt. In the next years, we should be in a position to focus on our equity and the many ways to leverage it as part of our succession strategy. Surely the SCORE document should be considered among all your options. There's more on Steps 7 and 8 on our website. I'll see you next time. Small Business School is made possible by support from IBM. We're not just for big business anymore. At our website, discover how technology can move your business forward. When it's your business, everything matters. IBM. And the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.